So one of the biggest things I get in the garage is my laptop is overheating. I get that a lot, especially in the warmer weather, go figure. And people come in and they say, hey, it's overheating. And the question I always ask them, okay, how do you know it's overheating and what is it doing? And the reason why I ask this question is, is because sometimes what you're actually doing can affect it from overheating. I've had people come in with brand new laptops. They say it's overheating, it's running real garbage. And most of the time when they use these laptops, it's sitting on their bed or it's sitting on their lap and they're suffocating all this ventilation that's trying to suck in fresh air to help cool it off. And usually it's something as simple as, well, just put it on a table, get some type of mount, or just put it on something that's not gonna block these vents. One option that I typically do is I personally use something like this. Even though I may not use the fans on this, this is from TechNet. I got this on the old Amazon for like 20 bucks. I put this underneath my laptop. My laptop, I kind of game with it a little bit and do some light editing with it. And this actually helps keep my, ma uh, my temps manageable when I'm doing stuff. And the reason why is, is because it has all this perforation over here and it allows the laptop to breathe instead of being suffocated on my lap or on my bed. So that's one option that you can do. Also, it has these fans, which I don't really use them. I probably should, but the fans also kind of help suck in some fresh air. And as you can see, it just has this opening right over here. So you can get some fresh air and help manage and keep the temperatures and keep the laptop quiet. Now the next next thing I access with them is when it's overheating, what is it doing? Is it just getting hot and shutting down or is it just running real slow? That kind of determines on how far we need to go with this. Sometimes it's really quick and easy as just kind of taking a air duster and just kind of blowing out all the dust out of these fins because they just get trapped with air just like any computer. And sometimes we have to go in a little more evasive depending on how bad this is and change the thermal pace. Like I said, laptops cram a bit of hardware in there so there's not much room to kind of get fresh airflow and for it to breathe. So something you gotta consider if your laptop's overheating. So in this case, I turned on the laptop, verified the customer's complaint, and the laptop was idling about 55 to 60 degrees Celsius, just loading windows. Yeah, that's definitely no bueno on this one. And then when you put on the old YouTube, it starts spiking up to 70 and then it just gives you a nice hard shutdown. So this thing was, getting pretty hot and I think the temperature I recorded before it was like 87 so yeah what's going on with it well what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and we're gonna talk about cleaning it applying fresh thermal paste and see if that kind of resolves the problem so what we're gonna need is a screwdriver of course I fix it has them um, you can get some cheap ones at Walmart some decent quality thermal paste because I have actually found that sometimes these manufacturers use some really not good thermal paste and changing it even on newer laptops and I had a, um, an Acer laptop where just changing it to Arctic MX4 not saying that this is the one to use or the best one actually granted me a couple of degrees cooler on it so definitely something to consider so let's switch angles over here let's open this up and let's see what we find inside so now just taking a quick assessment of it not sure if it comes in the camera I could see over here and I doubt you'll be able to see it in this camera but I already see a lot of dust build up right over here so that tells me that's the intake fan so it's a good chance that this might be clogged over here or in this case this laptop's already three or four years old we could have some dried up thermal paste so that's something to consider what I will do sometimes first and I recommend it to the customer just to save the money is I tell them hey just get a can of compressed air blow this out run the laptop see if that fixes it I've actually seen laptops where you blow this out tons of dust bunnies come out and next thing you know the laptop's running brand new and you have no issues with it uh, in this case we're just gonna go in a little more in depth just because well I want to be thorough with it and I don't want it coming back and you got to keep your customers happy so now this laptop right over here just has one, two, three, four, five, six, a bunch of screws that you need to take off. A lot of people are afraid to work on laptops. And I will admit, the first time I worked on a laptop, I kind of jacked some things up. It has little connectors. You're not sure how to pry things out. You could break the plastics around over here. You lose the screws. So it can be intimidating. But if you're not afraid, give it a shot. I have also found there are a lot of great uh, videos. iFixit's website has actually tutorials that show you how to take these things apart. So doing a little homework kind of helps and goes a long way. I've done this enough times, so I'm, I'm comfortable doing it. But if you're not, definitely check out some videos and watch it. It's not as bad as you can do. The key is, number one, having patience, not rushing. Don't pull or feel if something's going to break. Just relax, just chill, and reassess it. So I'm going to take these out, and we're going to see. Well, number one, it helps if I got the right screw bit in there. I'm going to take the screws out and we'll open this up. So 
So once you got all your screws out, take a pick, guitar pick, something plastic, and just kind of pry along the edge and seams, and that'll kind of help you, you know, take it out without breaking it. Guys, these things break real easy, and do you really want to get on the whole Amazon or eBay and try to find this and replace it for the customer? I don't think so. So once you've done that, which I've already kind of, well, i got a little more prying to do. There you go. And just pull off nice and easy. Make sure you ain't got no connectors because you don't want to rip those things off. And once you do that, there you go. And I can already see our problem. All right, let's get you in focus over here. Yep, that'll do it. That'll do it. This thing ain't spinning. So that's why this thing is overheating, spiking up, and shutting down. My question is, where's the other part? And did they feel when this happened? Yeah. So when you're taking these things apart, look for something like this. I've actually seen um, candy and rocks and yeah. But this right over here looks to be, let's see if we can pull it out, a toothpick. Yep. Uh, I wonder if they felt that one coming. So once you've removed the problem, then you pretty much go ahead and put it back together and try it. But in this case, we're going to take off the heat sink, apply first thermal paste, clean it up, and give this to our customer as a souvenir. So let me go ahead, take this apart, and we'll keep going. All right, so I'm taking a look at the thermal paste over here, and as you can see, we don't have good contact. As you can see, it's nice and, let's see if we get that up the angle over there. As you can see, I don't know how well that comes in, that we don't have good contact all over it. And even on the heat sink, definitely not too good. Thermal paste seems okay, a little dried up, but nothing too terrible. So I'm pretty confident that once we clean this up, real good put some fresh thermal paste on there clean out this fan and without the toothpick we'll be able to lower our temperatures so I'm gonna go ahead clean this up put this back together and we should be good as far as taking this off I mean just a couple of screws they have little triangles on it this pops right off I typically try not to take out any cables unless I have to because they're so delicate this I was able to flip it because it has a little piece of tape over here but I flipped it over and I have full access I'll be able to flip it back and then we'll be able to to do that and put it back together another thing that I kind of do too guys and I actually talked about this in my Acer video in which that laptop was overheating I typically try to bend these tabs back a little more that way they could apply a little more mounting pressure better pressure allows you to have better distribution of the thermal paste which helps with cooling and in that video we found that we were able to get a couple of degrees because uh, Acer and their laptop didn't have good tension as far as that so I'll probably bend these back a little bit just to add the tension on it and we should be good to go
All right, so our computer is up and running. Everything went fine. It's pretty easy, guys, so don't be afraid to do it. There's a lot of great resources that can help you to open these up and figure this out. This video is not specifically on this Lenovo IdeaPad 330S, but more so just something to keep in mind with your own laptops. At idle, we're sitting at 38 degrees Celsius, 37. So compared to before, as soon as we turned it on, we were at 60 degrees. That's a huge improvement. Now, the improvement was obviously because the little toothpick, which right over here, I hope this wasn't used, but I hope that uh, this little toothpick was blocking our fan and that caused the issue. After doing that, we cleaned out the dust over here, just blew it out real nice and easy first thermal paste and of course my tip and my secret is always I always bend the mounting tabs back a little bit just to get a little more pressure and I find that to be a lot better as far as spreading and holding down and applying that thermal paste a lot easier so that's just something I've done and I've always found that to work now just to kind of recap as these motorcycles go by now something to kind of keep uh, recap and keep in mind laptops they do run hot and that's something they got to set but they should not run unreasonably hot especially on idle on idle a laptop should be at a reasonable temperature it just depends on your ambient temperature and what you're doing with it but that's actually fine and i believe that's actually how it's supposed to work as far as the temperature now if your laptop is getting warm and you're not happy with it get one of these these work great it don't matter which one you get i've used pieces of wood i've used uh, textbooks but to me I find the whole point is is just to make sure that you have good open ventilation so airflow could get in and just help this thing to breathe a lot better you know so guys if you have an overheating laptop it's not the end of the world open it up thermal paste blowing it out maybe a heat pad and look for obstructions you might get lucky and find something as simple as that or worst case scenario it might be something that's broken Hopefully not. So, so I hope this video helps. If you have any questions, definitely leave some comments down below. I'm always available and I'd love to answer you guys' question. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next.